Hi. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use Breakdown Maker, from easily setting up breakdowns of your scenes to creating turntables with just a few clicks. Also, we will explore the Render Queue functionality, which allows you to render all your scenes efficiently. First of all, download the files and extract the zip file breakdown maker assets. To install the add-on, open Preferences and click on this icon, then select Install from Disk. Install the file, Breakdown Maker version 1.0 zip. Next, click on this icon to select the Assets folder. Choose the Breakdown Maker Assets folder we extracted earlier, and the add-on is now ready to use. First, we're going to explain how the breakdown feature of the add-on works. To do this, we'll use this scene as an example. To begin, expand the Breakdown Setup subcategory. Here, you'll see a drop-down list displaying all available collections and a list where we'll add the collections we want for our breakdown. To create your breakdown objects, select the collection you want and press this button. For this demonstration, we'll start with a single collection that contains all the elements of the scene I want to animate, but you can add as many collections as you like to the list, and you can also remove them if needed. Once you've selected all your collections, click on this thumbnail to view all the available breakdown types and choose the one you want. Press this button if you'd like to preview how the selected animation will look. Finally, click the Create Breakdown button. Just by doing this, you can play your scene to see the breakdown animation with the default settings. Next, expand the Manage Breakdown Collection tab. In this tab, you'll see all the breakdown objects we've added to our scene. Breakdown objects are essentially containers for the geometry nodes that allow animation of all the assets in each collection. In this tab, you have several options available. You can use this drop-down list to change the breakdown type for each breakdown object individually. You can also use this checkbox to toggle your breakdown objects on or off. When you disable it, the selected breakdown object is hidden and the original collection reappears. This is helpful if you need to make any adjustments to the objects in the collection. Once you're done, re-enable the checkbox to hide the collection, and the changes will be reflected in the breakdown object. You can also reorder the collections here, we'll see how this works in more detail later. Finally, you can delete your breakdown objects by pressing the trash icon. This will remove the object and display the original collection again. Expand the Auto Animation tab. You'll see that this option is enabled by default. If we disable it, we can manually animate each breakdown object using a slider in the Breakdown Settings tab. You'll also find these two parameters here. Animation Frame Count determines how many frames the animation will take to complete. You can adjust this value to speed up or slow down your animation. The Fade Animation parameter only works when we have multiple breakdown objects. I'll explain how it works later. Finally, by expanding the Breakdown Settings tab, we can customize the animations for each breakdown object individually. The Fade parameter controls the overlap between the end of one object's animation and the start of the next. Adjust this value until you achieve a result that feels right, as the optimal setting depends on the number of models in each collection. It's best to remove or move out of breakdown collections any non-visible objects, like empties or curves, as they can interfere with the overall animation of the collection. The manual anim parameter only works when you disable auto animation. If you use it, simply add two keyframes to adjust the animation to the specific frame range you need.
If the preview runs slowly, you can use the Fast Preview option, which displays cubes instead of models. This can improve performance in some cases, making it easier to adjust animation speed and other parameters. If you want to create multiple render passes for later compositing, you can replace each object's original material with a wireframe shader or simply display them with a solid color. If you want a more customized breakdown, you can split your models into multiple collections. I'll use the same scene but separate objects into multiple collections and customize each breakdown object. When you have multiple breakdown objects, the animations play sequentially one after the other. If you need to reorder your breakdown objects, use these arrows we saw earlier, and the animations will play in the order of this list. If you set auto animation to 160 frames, those frames will be divided among the breakdown objects. In this case, each breakdown object's animation will last 40 frames. The Fade option defines a frame range for blending the animations of the breakdown objects. If you set it to 1, each collection's animation will start only when the previous one finishes. If you set it to, say, 20, there will be a 20-frame overlap, where one breakdown object finishes while the next begins, giving the breakdown a smoother flow. As I mentioned earlier, Auto Animation divides the animation frames equally for each collection. However, sometimes this may not be ideal. One collection may contain more objects than another, and need more or fewer frames for a smooth animation. In these cases, it's best to turn off Auto Animation and manually set the keyframes using the Manual Anim parameter available for each breakdown type. To explain how the turntable feature works, we'll use this scene as an example. This tab allows you to create new scenes to showcase your models separately from your main scene. You can create turntables using individual models or entire collections. For this example, I'll use this samurai model. I'll set it to its rest pose before creating the scene. You can add your model by clicking this icon to select it. Then press the plus icon to add it to the list. You can add as many models or collections as you want. Each one will generate a new turntable scene. Once you're done, click the Create Turntable Scene button. When you do this, one of the new turntable scenes will automatically open. Turntable scenes have a different interface from the main scene, designed specifically to help you customize your turntable. First, the Light Settings tab lets you switch between an HDRI or a lighting setup. To select an HDRI, expand the thumbnail drop-down list or use the side arrows to navigate through the options. Alternatively, you can choose a lighting setup to illuminate your model. These are three light presets that you can use as a starting point and then customize it to suit your model. You can adjust the distance of the lights from the model with this option to fit the model's size. Also, you have the ability to control the intensity of all three lights simultaneously. As you can see here, when you select one of these lights, this button appears. Once you've customized the preset using these settings, press this button to release the light from the add-on's controls, allowing you to freely adjust it. If you modify the lights without releasing them and then switch presets, they'll revert to the default settings of the preset, and any changes you've made will be lost. In the Turntable Settings tab, you'll find several categories for customizing your scene. First, under the Model section, there's the Collection parameter. You typically won't need to modify this, as a collection containing the model is automatically created and assigned to this parameter when the turntable scene is generated. However, you can adjust the position, rotation, or scale here if needed. The base represents the background of your scene, and the add-on includes several customizable bases. The Auto Adapt to Model parameter 
automatically adjust the base's size to fit your model. Disable this option if your object is animated, as it will cause the base to constantly resize during the animation. You can switch between different bases using this drop-down menu. Use these two parameters to adjust the width and depth of the base. For all bases, you can modify their material and color. The background color setting works with the studio and circular base options, allowing you to assign a different color to the background objects in these bases. Next, in the camera tab, you can switch between a predefined camera with basic settings optimized for the turntable or a free camera that you can modify as you like. With the predefined camera, you can adjust basic parameters such as the lens or the aspect ratio of your scene. Additionally, you can orient the camera along the X and Z axes, move it up and down, or change its distance from the object. Keyframes cannot be used to animate the predefined camera. For that, you can switch to the free camera option. The free camera has no constraints, allowing you to modify it freely, add keyframes to animate it, or make any adjustments you need. In the next tab, you can adjust how the color card and reference spheres are displayed. You can choose to disable them, display them on a tripod next to your model, or place them in the corners of the camera view. The latter option has a limitation. It only works with the predefined camera, not with the free camera. When using the predefined camera, the color card and spheres will automatically adapt to the lens and aspect ratio you've selected. You can adjust their scale, which also works with the tripod option. For the tripod, you can additionally modify the distance from the object. Similarly, you can set the margin relative to the edge of the camera view. In some cases, your color card might appear behind your model. If that happens, you can use this parameter to fix it. In the shader tabs, you can add an automatic animation to your model, transitioning from a wireframe to the final textured version. Simply check the passes you want, and the animation will be created automatically. Later, in the Animation Settings tab, we'll see how to adjust the total duration of this animation. You can choose from several transition types, as well as set the duration of the transition between two shaders. Here, you can adjust the thickness of the wireframe. Since Blender's wireframe shader displays a triangulated mesh, we've included an experimental shader that doesn't triangulate the mesh. However, this doesn't always work perfectly, so use whichever option best suits your needs. Lastly, you can change the solid color and wireframe color using these two parameters. In the Animation tab, you can rotate your turntable model as well as the HDRI or lighting setup to showcase all parts of your model and how light interacts with the geometry. Enable the Rotate Model option, and the rotation will be applied automatically. Use the Frame Range parameter to set the duration of this animation. This parameter also determines the duration of the shader transitions we talked about earlier. Set the number of degrees you want your model to rotate and enable the symmetrical rotation option if needed. If you enable the Rotate HDRI option, the model will rotate first, and once that is complete, the HDRI rotation will begin. You can reset these parameters at any time. I'll explain how the Render Passes tab works in the main scene. I've created this breakdown scene to demonstrate how the Render tab works. If you haven't used compositing nodes, you'll see this button when you expand Render Passes. If you've already used compositing nodes to tweak your render, don't worry, the add-on won't interfere with your setup. Click it to access the options. You'll see a list of passes you can activate and some export format options. Enable the passes you want to render and press the Apply Passes button.
This will create a node responsible for rendering all the selected passes and automatically connect the necessary sockets. Once you've selected the desired passes, you can use the Copy Settings functionality to apply the same settings to other scenes. If you select the current scene, you can copy its settings to all other scenes in the project. If you select a different scene, you can copy that scene's settings to the one you're currently working on. As you can see, the settings have been applied to the other two turntable scenes in this project. When your scenes are configured and ready to render, expand the Render Manager tab. In this tab, you can create a render queue to export all your scenes. Add the scenes you want to render and press the plus icon to add them to the queue. You can choose to render the full frame range or just a specific interval. Finally, select the folder where you want the renders to be exported. The add-on automatically creates subfolders for each scene and each render pass to keep everything organized. Press Render Scenes and wait for the process to finish. Once completed, the folder will open automatically. If you want to cancel the render, go to the Blender window and press the Escape key. This will cancel the current render and all remaining scenes in the queue. If you press Escape in the Render window, it will only cancel the current render and immediately start the next one in the queue. When all the scenes have finished rendering, the folder will open automatically. As you can see, a subfolder has been created for each scene, and within each of them, there's another folder for each render pass. If you cancel the render at any point, pressing the Render Scenes button again will resume the render from the corresponding frame. If at any time you see this red button, it means the add-on needs to update the export path. Simply click it, and you'll be able to render again. In the Help tab, you'll find links to this tutorial, the add-ons documentation, our Discord channel, and the Diffuse Studio Blender Market Creator page, where you can ask questions or provide feedback to help us improve the add-on.